I like to joke with people that I have made a paper airplane. When you think of a paper airplane, you probably think of something like this. But for one designer, a paper airplane is something completely different and a lot more detailed. And of course, you know, people I'm sure think I'm totally crazy. And then when I actually show them photos, they often are pretty shocked and they probably think I'm crazy in a different way, which, you know, might be valid. For nearly a decade, on and off again, Luca Iacconi Stewart has been painstakingly designing and building this 160th scale model of a Boeing 777. It's a project that's really hard to explain in, in words, and so I often avoid doing that, and I just kind of skip to pictures because that's really the only way you can convey the sense of detail and just the kind of insanity of it all. It even blows my own mind. I, I don't really know how I've done a lot of it. This is no off-the-shelf model. He uses a bare minimum of tools and materials. It's, you know, manila folder, glue, exacto blades, straight edges. It's a pretty simple set of, of materials that I use, and it's all about using those to, to make all different kinds of things, and that's kind of the challenge and the fun in it. I have cut myself doing this project. Definitely sliced the very tip of my finger off, just the skin. It all began as a school assignment. It started on a much smaller scale in terms of the detail. There are still parts of it that are original, but I increased the complexity over time. I just found my skills increasing, and so I wanted to add more detail, and I've torn it apart many times to add more stuff or to make it more accurate. So detailed that there are tiny lamps made of strands of paper above the first class seats, and moving wing flaps, engine parts, and landing gear that actually retracts. Created both sides here, and I mounted them in this like little test jig that replicates the main structural elements that they're connected to. Um, so this would be like the cabin floor would be this way, and then the wings would be kind of this way. They have all the kind of steering functions, so I was actually kind of shocked that it all worked out, um, given how small the scale is. Yeah, this is completely made out of paper. The, the um, tires are completely uh, solid core inside so they can actually support a fair amount of weight. This is the nose landing gear, which is a lot less complex, but even at the time that was another piece that it was kind of like, wow, you know, I can't believe this, <laughs> this has worked out as well. So it just kind of retracts like that. It's a pretty simple concept, but you know, getting it to work in paper can be a challenge. There are two types of manila folder I use. There's a thinner kind that's like the regular folder you might, you know, encounter in the wild. And then there is a thicker kind that's more of a divider. So I use those for structural elements, like in the wings, that need to be much more kind of load-bearing. Making these parts can take weeks or even months. Luca designs the pieces, prints them, cuts them out by hand, and then painstakingly glues them together. There is a fair amount of concentration that, that I have to have when I'm putting this stuff together, but once I kind of get the hang of it, I know what I'm doing. This is very much a unique project in that I've had to research everything and drop my own plans, and that's what I think a lot of people don't realize. They think I'm either working off a kit, which is understandable, but that's really not the case, and I've had to come up with all of my own plans. And obviously, even if you had a kit, it wouldn't really translate or lend itself to this type of material. You know, I have to translate what they make into something that I can build and that will work in paper. There's a huge difference in how, you know, something will look the same on my model, but the way it actually works is completely different because I'm taking into account how paper responds. Not having plans means that sometimes hundreds of hours of work end up scrapped. So this I like to jokingly call the plane crash because, you know, it's like... <laughs> So th these are all sections that I've kind of ripped out um, over the years. You can see this is like the cabin sidewall. Kind of looks like, again, like what you might see in a plane crash, just totally shredded parts of the fuselage. So why would anyone spend this kind of time on a project like this? I've mainly done this project because I really enjoy the sense of calm and meditation that it, that it brings when I really get into the building process. The most satisfying thing is to look at pictures and, and know the actual plane and 
transform that into your own plans and then see it actually come together in paper, that's probably the most rewarding feeling and it's kind of exhilarating when you get to the end and you really see a component coming to life. It's like a really exciting sense of achievement and so that's kind of what keeps me going. Sections of the cabin actually open up to reveal the interior so that's first in business class and then this is business and economy. I haven't been able to fully replicate all the detail, or rather I haven't wanted to. Um, the overhead bins don't open. The seats don't actually recline. I think people often think they do, but they don't, unfortunately. Thanks to some press and Luca's popular YouTube channel, the plane model has taken him to some unexpected places, even to the actual Boeing assembly line. And so I actually got to see their whole production facility and actually got really up close to these planes, and that was an amazing experience. Their assembly line is really a feat of engineering, obviously, it's, and the sense of scale is just otherworldly. And it's landed in paying work, making this advertisement. About two years ago, I was contacted by Singapore Airlines, and I was lucky enough to work on a project with them, uh, an ad campaign for social media, and so I actually got to build this plane behind me, the A380, that that's their flagship. And after thousands of hours of toiling over the paper version, a few years ago, he finally flew on the jet his model replicates, a Boeing 777-300ER. I really was glad that I was finally able to, and it, I, kind of unfortunate that it took me so long, but it was, it was cool just to see the actual thing. All that time looking out the window got him ready for the last challenge. So yes, the plane does not yet have wings. I'm kind of in the midst of designing them and I've broken them down into sections and I've been slowly creating each different subsystem, if you will. But yeah, it's, it's a notable omission thus far and that's kind of the last, it's like the last thing I have to do, which is in fact a multi-year ordeal. I'm not sure why I'm so interested in airplanes when I was little, it was trained. I, I think it's hard not to be amazed by the fact that these huge pieces of you know metal and now plastic can take off into the air and that they're they're so advanced and complex it's a testament to human ingenuity